Imagine if your AI could sit right next to your data and respond instantly without shuffling data around. Now that gap between databases and AI systems has been one of the biggest pain points in building AI apps. So most teams have to you know, copy their data out of the secure databases into separate AI or uh, analytics stacks, which uh, adds latency, cost, and a lot of complexity as well. So Oracle, the sponsor of this video, uh, newly launched uh, database 26 AI that flips this model. So basically it brings uh, AI directly into the database. So you can run models and intelligent agents exactly where your data already lives. And in this video, I'm gonna break down how Oracle's uh, database 26 AI works, why this matters for AI developers, and then we're gonna walk through um, of uh, building an AI chatbot engine on top of Oracle's database. Let's get started. So before we look at the solution, let's look at the problems that most teams uh, run into today. So first of all, data movement. AI models need access to your data. It's pretty obvious, but that usually means that you're pulling data out of your database into some other AI service or some vector store or something like that. That is slow, that is expensive, and every extra hop adds latency and a security risk. Second, uh, fragmented architectures. So you're gonna often see that one system for uh, SQL data, let's say there's another for JSON or documents and a separate vector, uh, separate vector uh, database just for embeddings. So keeping all of this in sync is uh, painful and easy to mess up. Third, stale knowledge. So if you fine tune a, a model on your data, it is, uh, let's say, outdated the moment your database changes. So retraining takes time and money. And if you don't fine tune, you still need to, you know, have a live retrieval, which again means that you're wiring up external systems. And then there's also performance tuning. So as your AI driven uh, queries grow, someone has to, you know, keep uh, creating indexes and optimizing queries. So many, to many teams, uh, they don't have DBAs and, uh, you know, this becomes like a constant uh, time sink. So Oracle calls database 26 AI an AI native database. Now that sounds like marketing, so let's break it down to what it actually means. The key idea is very simple. AI is built directly into the database engine and uh, you know model inference, vector search, and even like AI agents, they run inside the database process. So AI isn't something that is bolted on anymore. You know, your, your data doesn't need to be shipped off to another system. So instead of moving data to AI, the AI comes to data trying my best to, you know, simplify it. So that's a big shift. You know, it means that fewer data copies are being made, there's better security, obviously for obvious reasons, much more la lower latency. And this also builds on Oracle's longstanding co uh, converged uh, database idea. So you can store relational data, JSON documents, graph data, uh, spatial data, and now, you know, vectors and AI models all in one system. So you don't need like a separate database you don't need to like glue code everywhere or something like that, you know. And also on top of this, um, the 26 AI database uses uh, AI internally for things like vector search, automatic uh, tuning and query optimization. So it's not like, you know, AI support, uh, it's not just like an AI support uh, as a feature sort of a thing because AI is woven through the entire data stack. So if you look at the website, Oracle basically describes this as an AI for data approach so you're using AI not just uh, on your data, but inside the database to make everything faster, simpler, and easier to work with. Let's walk through an example. Let's see a demo uh, code, how you would uh, build a deep research chatbot for an enterprise. By the way, I will leave uh, all the links in the description below, so you can check out these notebooks and these codes yourself as well. Now, this is a classic RAG uh, use case, and it fits uh, the Oracle 26 uh, AI uh, really well. So first is data ingestion and embeddings. Imagine that your company already has product documents, Q3 reports, support tickets, and customer data that is stored in the Oracle's uh, database uh, 26 AI. Now the database can generate embeddings directly inside the DB using uh, either OCI generative AI or on uh, NX uh, models. You might literally call uh, you know, like an SQL uh, function that takes uh, text and return a vector which then gets stored alongside the document using Oracle's vector index. And you know, even JSON data can be handled the same way uh, using uh, JSON uh, duality views. Next is the retrieval phase. So a user is gonna ask, let's say, 
what performance issues were mentioned in the Q3 report and have they been resolved. So Oracle is going to run a vector similarity search to find the relevant paragraph in the Q3 PDF and at the same time, um, you know, joins that with the structured data. So maybe a support ticket or a change log table that shows how the issue was fixed. Was fixed. And uh, thanks to the unified hybrid vector search that I mentioned already, this all happens in one query inside the database in milliseconds. Now, next comes the generation part. Oracle can securely pass that retrieved context to an LLM, either an external model or OCI's hosted models using the model control context, uh, model context protocol, uh, MCP and AI agents. The LLM can basically even ask follow-up questions. So for example, if it sees a bug ID in the report, it can query another table to fetch details before even answering. So this is what Oracle is calling agentic AI. Now the final answer might be something like the Q3 report highlighted latency issues that were caused by missing indices and these were resolved in October using automatic indexing and recent metrics show that the issue is fixed or something like that, right? So the answer is grounded in the live data, not, uh, you know, re retraining, uh, like no retraining is required essentially. And throughout all of this, the security and the governance, uh, governance stays intact and Oracle enforces uh, row level security and data masking. So the AI only retrieves what the user is allowed to see, something that is very hard to do when AI runs outside the database. Now the big takeaway here is the, how simple the architecture becomes. You basically have the Oracle Database 26 AI plus an LLM and the database handles document storage, embeddings, vector search, uh, security and even uh, agent orchestration. So compared to like stitching together multiple databases and services, this is much more cleaner, faster and you know much easier to maintain as well. Now, one of the most important things in uh, Oracle's 26 AI database is how it removes friction between your database and the AI. So first of all, as I mentioned already, AI runs right next to the data. So Oracle can host AI models and even AI agents directly in the database environment. And using things like, you know, MCP, if you don't know what that is, model controls, uh, model context protocol, uh, external LLMs can securely talk to that database, or you can, you know, use Oracle's in uh, database uh, AI services as well. So they started with like select AI, which basically lets you query every, you know, like query the data in plain English. Now, you know, that's evolved into uh, select AI agent, where you can basically uh, build actual AI agents inside the database. And these agents can ask follow-up questions. They can reason over data and take actions, you know. And uh, instead of building a lot of, let's say, external application logic, the database itself becomes agent aware. Second, no more ETL to AI systems, right? So since AI runs everywhere, uh, you know, where the data lives, you don't need to ship data over APIs or pipelines. So a task like, you know, you can be like, okay, summarize today's uh, sales for me, can run directly on the database without pulling the data across the network, do you understand? And you know, when this uh, runs on like Exadata, for example, vector search and uh, AI workloads are even faster because some of that work is offloaded to some specialized hardware, okay? And third thing I wanna mention is that the data to AI pipeline is also automated. So 26 AI can generate embeddings automatically. It can store them, it can index them, and it can use them for similar uh, similarity search. And you can use built-in models. Uh, you can also bring your own uh, uh, models or connect to like popular LLMs in Oracle's ecosystem. And the database uh, manages the full flow. So the data, the vectors, the retrie retrieval, and the feeding context into the model, all under the same uh, you know security and access controls. Oracle has been moving towards self-tuning for years with autonomous database and 26 AI pushes this even further. A great example is automatic indexing. So instead of a DBA guessing which indexes uh, might help, the database watches real query patterns and uses AI to create or drop indexes automatically. So in the past, tuning could take like hours or even days. Now the system continuously learns from query history and keeps performance optimized on its own. And it doesn't just stop at indexing. The query optimizer uses machine learning to choose better execution plans based on past runs. There's also an AI-driven SQL plan management that can detect performance uh, regressions and fix them quickly. So Oracle is calling this AI for database management. 
pretty cool stuff. So for developers and teams, this basically removes a huge amount of manual work and guesswork. Now you'll be like, okay, is it replacing database experts? Not really, but like every most you know AI tools, it's augmenting them. So think of it like as an always on assistant uh, DBA that is working in the background uh, with the option for humans to like review or override uh, the decisions. Yeah. One of the flagship features in the Oracle Database 26 AI is a built in vector search. So if you're building modern AI applications, um, like you know chatbots, recommendation systems, research agents or whatever, you've probably come across RAG. If you don't know what it already means, it's a retrieval augmented generation. Make sure you, you know, research more about it. I did a playlist on that as well, actually. Um, check out on my YouTube channel. But the idea is simple. You store embeddings of your documents and you retrieve the most uh, relevant pieces to send to an LLM. The normally that means that you're adding a separate vector database. But Oracle uh, 26 uh, AI removes that step by bringing the vector search directly into the database. So they are calling it unified hybrid uh, uh, vector search. So it basically means that you can combine the semantic search with the regular SQL in one single query. So for example, uh, you can let's say find documents that are semantically similar to a question. You can filter by date or category and even like you can pull some uh, you know uh, related graph data all at once. Now this is huge for AI applications because imagine asking an assistant like what does our Q3 sales report say about product uh, X in Europe and the database can retrieve that uh, relevant uh, you know a paragraph from a PDF the matching rows from a sales table and even related uh, knowledge graph entries in all just like one query. So the AI then uses that combined context and then gives you a precise up-to-date answer. So what this really basically mean is that the 26 AI uh, database becomes like a one-stop knowledge store for AI. You don't need Postgres plus uh, vector DB plus like a search engine, or everything glued together. You can just use one database that can store your data, power semantic retrieval, and because this is built into Oracle, you still get enterprise create security and you get that governance. So if a user or an agent isn't allowed to see certain types of data, those uh, vectors uh, simply won't be retrieved. And that's obviously quite critical for real world enterprise AI use cases. At this point, you might be thinking this all sounds good, but is Oracle actually serious about AI? I mean, the answer is yes, just not in the way people usually expect. So Oracle, you know, they're not trying to build a chat GPT competitor okay, from the looks of it. Instead, it's positioning itself as the infrastructure layer for AI and, you know, you know, working with the biggest uh, model builders out there. You've probably seen the headlines like OpenAI signed a massive multi-year partnership with Oracle to run a huge part of its compute on Oracle cloud infrastructure. Meta has also committed billions to Oracle for AI workloads. Anthropic, XAI, a lot of the major AI players are training models on OCI. Why are they doing that? Because, you know, largely because of performance. Oracle has, uh, you know, built OCI with extremely fast networking and large GPU clusters. And um, they've even like announced what they call the world's largest AI supercomputer in the cloud. So basically st stitching together tens of thousands of NVIDIA GPUs for training large models. That kind of infrastructure does matter. And this context is important, uh, you know, for uh, database 26 AI because it basically shows that the database isn't some isolated product. It's basically a part of a much bigger AI strategy from hardware all the way up to applications. And, you know, just as importantly, Oracle is a uh, model agnostic. Database 26 AI isn't locked to one provider. So it basically supports standards like um, ONNX. So you can basically bring your own embedding models. It also integrates with agent style frameworks and it can securely connect to external LLMs, uh, whether that's OpenAI, Anthropic, uh, Cohere, or anything else. So, you know, the idea is that Oracle becomes uh, this open hub where your data lives in one place and you can apply whatever AI models or frameworks you prefer on top of it. And that openness also shows up in things like uh, Apache Iceberg that support, uh, you know, um, for uh, lake house workloads, right? And from a developer's point of view, you could, uh, you know, ideally train models on OCI GPUs 
you can use the best of breed LLMs and you can store and serve your data through Oracle Database 26 AI all in one, uh, you know, like a coherent uh, setup or even in like a, a hybrid environment if you want. So you might be wondering, uh, do I have to use Oracle Cloud for this? What if everything I am running is already on AWS or, you know, Azure or GCP? Um, the short answer is no, because you are not logged in. Um, Oracle has gone big on multi-cloud. So this database 26 AI can run on Oracle Cloud, sure, but also inside other cloud providers uh, through managed services like Oracle databases at Azure, at AWS, and also Google Cloud. So Oracle manages the database, but it's going to live in the cloud that you already use. And they've also introduced uh, multi-cloud uh, universal credits, which basically means that you can sign uh, one Oracle contract and you can use the same uh, credits across the other you know, hyperscalers like AWS, Azure, GCP, or uh, OCI. So you have the same pricing model, the same features. It's just that it's deployed uh, wherever it makes sense for your applications. So this basically gives you a lot of flexibility. You can run the database close to your um, you know, other services. You can choose regions based on latency, compliance, um, and you can still get all of that 26 AI capabilities. And you know, Oracle has especially strong in integration with Azure. Um, they include uh, you know, low latency, interconnects between OCI and Azure, and databases at Azure. It's also now available in many regions and it's also expanding. Similarly, there's like multi-cloud support for, um, uh, you know, it's rolling out for AWS as well. And, you know, for AI workloads, this really matters because you might want to use Azure OpenAI for your models. You might want to, let's say, you know, you want to use that, but Oracle Database 26 AI, that is something you want to use for your data or your vector search and your agents. So multi-cloud makes that uh, like a clean setup and not like a workaround. And if you're on-prem, that should be cool as well. So, you know, the key takeaway here is that the AI features come to where you are and not the other way around. So if you want to try the Oracle Database 26 AI yourself, getting started is actually pretty easy. Oracle has an always free tier where you can spin up autonomous uh, database instances with the 26 AI features included. You can also download the free developer edition and even run it locally, including, you know, in Docker to experiment with things like JSON duality and vector search. And Oracle's uh, Live Labs uh, workshops are another good option. So I'll leave the links in the description below. They run in the browser, so no setup is needed. And you can also walk through real examples side by side. Um, also, since uh, 26 AI only launched recently, this is a good time to explore what an AI enable the database uh, actually looks like in practice. And, you know, stepping back, even if you don't end up using Oracle, the bigger trend is clear. Databases and AI are converging and you know, Oracle Database 26 AI is one of the strongest examples for that shift. So, you know, bringing AI, vector search and automation directly into the data layer. So we covered a lot in this video uh, from core concepts to like some examples. If any of this sounds interesting, uh, the best way to learn, you know, is to try it yourself. Play with the free options, uh, see how it fits your workflow and also explore what building AI closer to your data can actually unlock for you. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.